Hey guys, I'm back for a new book review and you'll know that it's not a book that I mentioned would be on my 2020 finishing reading list. And it's for a few reasons I, it's, that I read this and not any of the books in that list. One, it's really short compared to the other ones. So I'm able to tackle it before the year's over. And two, I'm probably going to move the rest of the books on that list for 2021 because I've been busy doing a lot of a lot of other stuff and I'm just not going to be able to tackle those big books t before the year is over. And so with that, I'm reviewing Nathaniel West's Miss Lonely Hearts. I have it in this collection of all of his novels and all of his like writings and letters from the Library of America. Library of America is one of the best uh, pub like nonprofit publishing companies out there, especially if you want to get high quality texts if they're all together. I have pretty much almost all of William Faulkner's collection on the Library of America. So with Ursula K. Le Guin and a few other people in, the, in like poet in American poetry. So Miss Lonely Hearts is a, is a novel that's quite possibly, I would put it next to alongside Thomas Pynchon's The Crying of Lot 49. It's probably the single most potent and just insanely, like, the amount of stuff that Nathaniel West is, is able to get away with in such a short little book is astonishing. I can't think of any, like I said, Thomas Pynchon's The Crying of Lot 49 is probably the only other, like, short novel I can think of that's able to pack a lot in something that's so, that's so small of a book. And I would put As I Lay Dying with Faulkner up there, but I would say that as I Lay Dying is a little bit longer than the average. Because so when I think of a small book like Miss Lonely Hearts and The Crying of Lot 49, I think of a book that's barely over 100 pages long. And As I Lay Dying is close to 200, and it's, it's a, it just barely ekes that out. So if As I Lay Dying were shorter, it would obviously be up there as well, because As I Lay Dying is one of my favorite novels ever written. It is probably the most original novel ever written in the 20th century, but... We're not, this is in a William Faulkner review. That, that'll actually come a little bit later that'll, in the next few weeks. But um, Miss Lonely Hearts is a novel about a character, and his name is Miss Lonely Hearts. You never hear his real name. And he's um, essentially a columnist at, at a New York paper. And what he does is he gets letters from people who are wanting to get advice from Miss Lonely Hearts about like their sufferings and date and all that kind of stuff. And the setting is very important because it takes place during the Great Depression. So a lot of people are down on their luck whenever Miss Lonely Hearts isn't at the column. He's either at a speakeasy getting drunk or he's at home lounging around or he's with his friends or he's being constantly bombarded by his uh, boss whose name is Shrike who is up there with McCarthy's Judge Holden. He's probably one of the most like, how do I describe, Shrike, he's, he's, he, he's the villain, but he's not really a villain. He, he is a rhetorician at heart, and his rhetoric is beyond baffling. And to describe the point of the novel as, as succinctly as possible, Miss Lonely Hearts views, he, he has a, a major Christ complex. He's constantly, like, feeling depressed and leveled down. Like, he's being just beat down by the letters he gets. Like, some of the letters he'll get from his uh, readers are, are just, they're just, it's hard. Like, th this novel is, is depressing and bleak as hell. It is bleak. And the fact that this was written in, like, 30, in, like, the 30s or the 20s, one of those, I think it was, like, in the early 30s. 1933 is it, to be exact. The fact that Nathaniel West gets so much into this that's so utterly just, like, sad and, and like, forlorn and just bleak. It's just, like, I'm surprised he wrote something this this freaking depressing in this time. Especially when he gets away with descriptions and things that Miss Lonely Heart does. Like, they'll be, how do I, like, he'll be, uh, he'll be describing Miss Lonely Heart's, like, groping women's breasts and such and like trying to fuck them on their way to their house in ways, but it's like a girl that he's in love with, but it's, he's so graphic, but not, he doesn't go too far. And one of the things what makes Miss Lonely Heart such a depressing read is that 
the letters that he gets from some of his readers, like one, one of the letters, for example, is from a, someone named Desperate. And it's a 13 or 14 or 16 year old girl, I can't remember the exact age. And she's talking to him about how she was born with like, there's no nose. She has like this hole in her face. And she's depressed that none of the boys will like, that likes her. And she just, like, she's ugly. She can't stop looking in the mirror and thinking like, why did she deserve this? And she's asking him like, what did God do? Like, what did I do for God to do this to me? And she's like, should I commit suicide? And it kind of ends like that. And he never responds to her. And the reason Miss Lonely Hearts has a Christ complex is because since he is the head of this uh, column, and he's essentially getting letters from people of all different walks of life, telling them they're like pouring their hearts out and how they suffer greatly. And he's like, I don't know how to alleviate their pain. I don't know what to do. And so that's why he's he goes through this like crippling depression. He's getting drunk all the time. He he like he he allows Shrike to um, just bombard him with these re re rhetorical like. He kind of makes fun of Miss Lonely Hearts. The whole point of um, Shrike is that he's the antithesis of, of Miss Lonely Hearts' Christ complex. Miss Lonely Hearts is a has a Christ complex, whereas Shrike is like the rhetorical Satan, essentially. He's the Satan to Lonely Hearts' is Christ, but it's not the Satan that you would think. It's not like when you think of a Satan. He's not like like twirling his mustache like, I am evil. He's more like, he questions Lonely Hearts' profession and says like, it's kind of a pointless endeavor with what you're doing, but he kind of pokes fun at him. He's kind of like, oh, it's just like, that's what you're doing. That's God for you. That's Jesus. That's what you have to do, right? And he gives him certain options, like how you can alleviate the pain. You can live like an, like an aesthetic hedonist. You can just live like maintaining, maintaining pleasure your whole life. Or you could find pleasure through art. Or you can find pleasure through this other aspect. He gives them per like all these other... It's like some brilliant passages that Nathaniel West writes in the, from, that comes from the mouth of Shrike. And that's why I think he's kind of like Judge Holden from Cormac McCarthy's Blood Meridian, because he is a great rhetorician. He can spew philosophical, like, p propositions to people in such a way that it's, it's very alluring, and it makes sense in some ways, and it's very brilliant. Whereas Miss Lonely Hearts just wants to, just wants to, like, like get submerged in this depressive heap that he's just inflicted upon himself because he has this Christ complex. And throughout the novel, when he's with his, with the girl that he loves, who essentially is trying to make himself feel better. She takes him out to the farm where they have like essentially a little, they're by themselves and they just swim together. They're naked swimming they make love and such, and they just get away from it all. And she tries to make him feel happy. In it. And it's kind of interesting because Nathaniel West, his, his real name was Nathan Weinstein. He was Jewish. And from what I've read is that he was, he hated being Jewish. Like he was like a, I don't know if I would say that he was a self-hating Jew, but he was mostly fascinated with Christianity and like mysticism and even Gnosticism in some ways. Because Miss Lonely Hearts is a, is a very Gnostic is a very Gnostic kind of book, and with Miss Lonely Hearts not finding any alleviation from his girlfriend, not finding it in the bar, not finding it from Shrike's little like discussions, like he just doesn't know how to get rid of it. So until at the very end, which I don't want to really spoil for y'all, I just want because I think people should read this book, Miss Lonely Hearts, because it is so. It really does capture something about the human spirit that, that can be very relevant today about how we can, because people today want to say like, oh, we're very in, like we care about other people's suffering, but we don't really know what to say to them because people have such like extremely different like problems and they have that you, you really don't know how to address them in a way. In a way, we're all kind of a Miss Lonely Hearts if we really feel that we want to alleviate people's pains and suffering. But with Miss Lonely Hearts, as the novel progresses, it gets more intense and intense in that he eventually has this coming down, like this breaking down. But then he'll eventually actually get this epiphany at the end of the novel that kind of shows him what he has to do. But I think what Harold Bloom, what Harold Bloom said about Miss Lonely Hearts is probably the best description of what the novel does. It is essentially 
a man, and this kind of goes back to the Gnostic and Christian mystic roots of the of a wet and west's style. And then what Harold Bloom says is, I'm going to paraphrase because I haven't, I don't have it in front of me or anything, but um, Miss Lonely Hearts is about a character who is trying to get out of the abyss of this painful, depressing, fallen world, and he feels that the only way you can do that is you have to just kind of embrace the abyss in a way. You kind of have to embrace the absurdity of the abyss and not really go against it. But it's not... I think I remember how he phrased it now. He actually said that Nathaniel West tries to find some way to redeem humanity through sin. That's kind of a contradiction, don't you think? Because whenever you think of, of, of theology, whether it be from Judaism or Christianity the, the, theology... It's that if you want to get redeem yourself, you're going to have to do it only through sin because there's no other way you can. Because if there is no purity in a Gnostic or in a kind of, you know, purely philosophical like mode of thinking, then it's like you, can, you kind of have to do it through sin. And that's what that, that is somewhat the point of the novel, because if you read it, you'll totally get what I'm saying if you read it from beginning to end, like what Miss Lonely Hearts has to do, what he finally has to do to himself to kind of transcend the utter bleakness and, and like hor horribles of the horribleness of reality that he has been put, that been placed upon him, like the Christ figure. So it's a very complicated little short novel. And the fact that he got away with it for not even a hundred pages, it's, it's beyond impressive. Not, very few people can do something that potent and very like multi-layered in such a short read. So I would recommend you guys read Miss Lonely Hearts by Nathaniel West. I'll actually probably get to something else of his at some point because I want to read his book, A Cool Million and The Day of the Locust as well in here. But right now I'm actually kind of, and this is another reason why I'm not doing the other books. I've been kind of getting... Whenever you read things, you kind of want to read stuff that you have a like a like a taste for, and this is the thing I have when it comes to uh, the free will argument. It's like people want to say free will is a thing because you can make your choices. But I'm like, I'm not really sure about that because that implies you can make any decision you want without any consequences of your emotions or your predilections, and I don't think that's the case because I kind of use the uh, analogy. I, I use the analogy that. If you're in the mood to eat a certain food, you're you're not gonna like go get something that's that's like Chinese if you're in the mood for Taco Bell or something. That's just a crude example, but it's like it's our our emotions and and what we feel and what we're in the mood for is what dictates what we're gonna do. So, and the way I mean that, how I'm talking about this is that I'm currently reading William Faulkner's. Uh, a, a biography of his, The Life of William Faulkner by Carl Rollison. It actually came out this year. This is the first volume. I'm getting through it because William Faulkner is one of my favorite novelists. And I'm going to get his second volume at some point. I'm probably getting it for Christmas. So to, to put it as short as I can, I have an inkling and, I, and I'm being drawn to read this more than the other books I said I would read, if that makes sense. It's kind of like if you're in the mood to watch a horror film, but not in the mood to watch like an action film. It's that sort of thing. I'm just more in the mood to read William Faulkner at the moment. So just wanted to get this little review out as quickly as possible because Miss Lonely Hearts, I finished it a few days ago, but it's still in my head about like the, com the sheer complexities of it. So just want to let you guys know what I'm doing at the moment and that I might make a, I actually might make a video in, a, in the next week or two about my favorite books that I read this whole year, actually, because I read quite a, about 10 or 11 books this year, and I'll probably do the top 10 or the best in my, in the chrono, in the order that I like them from best, so I, you might see that in the next week or so, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you like reviewing, if you like people who review books and all that kind of stuff, think about subscribing to me, give this video a like and all that good stuff. I never normally say that at the end of my videos. I just don't think about it. I just figure... If you naturally like it, you're just going to do it regardless of me asking for you to do it. But I figure I should just do that anyway and just say it. Well, you guys have a good day. And hopefully if I don't make a video before Christmas, then hope or after, you know, before Christmas, have a Merry Christmas and everyone be safe.